I'm going to talk to you about small modular reactors. But before getting into that, I want to share uh, with you a couple of passions of mine. First one, of course, it's small modular reactors and licensing. I made my, my PhD about uh, SMR licensing. Uh, the other one is actually uh, digitalization and social media. How many of you use social media actively? Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever. Great, uh, I think that's something that we really, really need to do even better because I think uh, that many other energy uh, sources and, and fields, they, do, they use social media much better uh, than we do. So that's uh, one thing. The last thing is skydiving and I'm actually jumping uh, over there. So some passions of mine. My phone also here, I, I try to tweet all the time. Not, maybe not while talking. Okay, um, few issues I, I'm going to talk through. Um, basically it's three things. What are SMRs? Uh, what challenges do they have? And why do we see them to play a big role in the future? Do you all know what small modular reactors are? Please show hands if you have heard about SMRs. Quite many. Um, if I ask you how big they are, how many can answer? Uh, fewer. Okay. It's, I just try to, to understand who I'm who I'm talking to, so so I don't get uh, too f too far too fast. Basically, small modular reactors. They are small. Uh, <laughs> And what they, what they tried to say with that is that I think the limit is 300 megawatts electric. That's basically what, what we use in, in World Nuclear Association, also in IAEA and some other, other associations. Usually it's 300 megawatts electric. But that's not the only thing that SMRs are, so I'm going to go through a few features. If you have questions in between that you don't understand something, just show hand and, and we can take a few of those. Uh, I don't have that many slides. You have seen this slide earlier, right? Yes? No? Yes. Great. That's what I thought. So you know what we are talking about when we talk about the current uh, generation 10.2, 10.3 10 10 reactors. And when, when we put SMRs here, they are somewhere there uh, in the near-term deployment, 103 uh, plus. Usually we don't include 104 uh, reactors. Of course we can, but, but right now, at, at least in the, in the associations, they usually have focus in, in shorter-term uh, SMRs. So that's why usually we talk about light water reactors when we talk about SMRs. And also when I'm talking here, the main focus is light water reactors. So not, not too much in the Gen 4 reactors. Of course, some parts are, are basically equal with SMRs and Gen 4 reactors. Then a few advant advantages of SMRs. Why do we actually check them? We have learned in the history that uh, nuclear reactors should be big. So it would, it would be, um, uh, well, uh, well, at least the costs would be uh, better for, for big reactors than smaller ones. So they are cheaper if you can uh, build them bigger. But lately we have noticed that it's not always the case. So, so these small modular reactors, if you can build them step by step, or if you can utilize the modularity or other features, they can actually make a business case. Of course, it's still a question if that's true because nobody's built them. Or if, if, you, if you say that all type of reactors that are small are SMRs, of course, we are using two of them, two VVRs in Lovisa site in Finland. But we are, we are not talking about all um, traditional PWRs when we talk about SMRs, but they have to be advanced designs. And what I mean when I talk about advanced designs, usually I mean that they are integrated. They don't have primary circuits. So they, they might have primary pumps, but they don't have pipes in between the, the pressure vessel and the pumps. So they are integrated designs. That's basically, most of the SMRs are integrated designs. Of course, there are differences. 
But here, when we talk about the advantages, the modularity, so that um, each component components are small enough, so they can be serial pro, uh, product. There can be serial uh, production used. Also, uh, factory fabricated. They are simpl simpler than uh, big reactors. What we try to do when we when we design these SMRs, we try to reduce the number of systems. So they are really, really uh, simple and clear, and we use passive safety features as much as possible. Basically, those are the, the main things. Of course, because of that, uh, the cons construction times are much shorter than big reactors. But the vendors are now talking about three years. We don't know if that's true. So it, it has to be tested and seen, and it can, it can vary between different countries, of course. But let's, let's see and, and hope that somebody will build them fast. And flexibility uh, may be even the biggest thing in the future, because I have been in, in these discussions lately a lot, with a lot of um, more renewables coming into the grid. How does nuclear survive, and, and what is the nuclear role in the, in the uh, big picture in the future? And what we see in SMRs is that they can be even more flexible than big reactors. Maybe they can react faster or they can be put in different locations so they can support this new type of energy production. That's at, at least that's possible if, if uh, we don't know if it's possible in political point of view, but at least technological point of view, it's, it's possible to do. So we'll see. Uh, then I have one example. This is new scale uh, SMR. Have you s has okay hands? How many of you have heard about new scale small modular reactors? Reactor design. Okay, a few. This is basically the design that is moving forward in in USA. That's actually the only design at the moment that is really moving forward in USA. And the the plan is I. I think that is 2023-24 time frame that they would have the first one uh, in operation. There is a uh, project, I think few projects ongoing, and they will apply for design certification this year for this design. But the idea here is, th this is really cool. Uh, does anybody have a pointer? It would be really nice to point something. No? Maybe? No? If I, if I, oh, hi, yeah, it works. Basically, uh, this is the, the reactor hall, and all these things here, there, there are reactor uh, modules. In this design, they have 12 reactor modules, or they can be six or 12. And this is one reactor module here, and this outer vessel is, is actually a containment. So this is the containment, and the in, in turn, uh, intervessel, this one here, it's a little bit hard to see, that's the reactor vessel. The idea is that, yes, you have a question. What is the scale? The scale? Yes. Um, the size of this? I don't have the meters, but the, the size in electrical uh, point of view, this is uh, 50 megawatt electrical per one, one reactor unit. That's, uh, I, I, I can't remember the uh, meters. I can check them later. But this is basically the idea. And I think this SMR is a good example because it's like, um, it's small, it has most uh, features, SMR, typical SMR features of any of, of the designs that I have seen. So basically, you can build one, or, or you can include many of them. I, I wouldn't maybe build one of these, because you know it's a little bit too big reactor um, building for, for one uh, very small reactor unit, but it's possible. So that's, that's the idea. That's the, the whole uh, essence of small modular reactors. But this is only one example. There are many of them. Here are a couple of uh, ways that we are, or people in different countries are planning to use SMRs. 
So you can either use it for traditional power production, like the, uh, like the new scale design uh, could be a good example. Then if we ask for that type of SMRs, usually they are close to 300 megawatts electric. Usually then we look at these kind of big, small modular reactors, at least the bigger size, uh, and not these very, very small ones. So we have, I have a few examples here. New, on top of new scale, we have Chinese reactors that are moving forward. We have Korean smart reactor. Also in Argentina, there is one, one design. Uh, just examples. Then if we go to isolated areas or specific energy needs, we might go to these smaller reactors. Then we have another designs. They have, in UK, they have U battery, uh, and then Toshiba has uh, 4S designs. Then we talk maybe more um, other, maybe it's then better to talk about other than, than light water reactors. Basically, these bigger ones, what we have here, these are light water reactors. Then if we go to new, newcomer countries, there are BART-based uh, SMRs. Uh, there's, you have probably heard about KLT40, that's, uh, that has been already built in Russia. I'm not sure if it's in operation yet, but it's, it's in very advanced state. Also, here in France, there's a Flex Blue reactor. Uh, maybe you have heard about that one? Oh, yes, that's what I thought. Uh, very close to, to you, of course. Uh, very. Uh, Again, very specific design, very different than, than what we are used to. Then, of course, code generation, when we go to that area, we might want to talk about high temperature gas cooled reactors and, and things like that. But these are different ways of, of utilizing SMRs, and then, then, of course, you have to select your, uh, uh, like, based on your need, you have to select what type of SMR you need. Just examples. Then I actually collected the, the situation at the moment. These countries are moving forward with SMRs. The USA, I already mentioned uh, New Scale. There was also Empower design that was going forward very fast, but it's stopped now. I think there is some funding uh, situation there. Who, who, we don't know what is the current situation and if it, it will go forward. Then, of course, China. There are at least a couple of uh, reactors moving forward, and they, they are moving forward very fast, so it might be that uh, they come online earlier than, for example, the new scale design that I presented. Then the Russia I mentioned, KLT40, that is in very advanced state. Uh, in Argentina, they have this CAREM25, uh, and that is under construction, but that will be a demonstration plant, and uh, the plan is to, to uh, I think, redesign it to be bigger, because this is only 25 megawatts, so it will be about 100 or, or that size. Uh, Korean Smart SMR is already licensed some years ago, but now it's under further development, development in Saudi Arabia. I think the idea there is to, to make it more uh, passive because it was based on, on active, active uh, safety features. So they wanted to, to make some changes there. And in UK, uh, in UK, there is no specific design selected, but there is activity ongoing and there are many SMR designs now competing in UK that um, how can they move forward to, to develop SMRs in UK. And of course, many, many research, re research centers also active in that, in that um, competition in UK. Basically, these are the countries that um, are now very active in SMR, SMR field. Let's see what happens. Because what, I've been in this field for more, um, more than five years at least, very detailed about SMRs. And what I know is that sometimes some, some reactor, some company is moving very fast forward, and then suddenly something happens and it stops. So we never know what happens next year or year after that, and who will actually finish first. Let's see. Okay, that was about SMRs. Then I go through a couple of challenges. I have been mentioning them already, but a little bit more. 
and at the, at the end, something about the role. What do you think are the challenges in SMRs? Any ideas? I give you a few here. Licensing. We have been talking about licensing a lot uh, in, in past five years or so. Licensing in nuclear, it's uh, a huge task, as we all know that. And in SMRs currently, the thing is that we would have to go through licensing every single time, again and again. And even in new scale reactor, we don't know if we would have to license each reactor separately. So you might even have 12 licenses for this one, one um, plant. And that's like something that nobody knows what would be the best way to, to do. And different countries are using different ways. So that's something that we have been uh, working on in World Nuclear Association. And we have been promoting this harmonized licensing for SMRs. So at least the main critical uh, safety, safety critical part of the plant could be accepted internationally or between different countries. So that would be standardized. And that's the whole idea of what, what we have been working on in uh, WNA. Then uh, on top of licensing, of course, the first deployment. It's, it's really difficult to find the first customer in these projects. It's, it's probably much easier to find the second one or the third one when somebody has done the first one. But for the first one, it, it has been a um, challenge in, in many countries. So they have now tried this consortium of utilities and developers to, to take the first uh, project or national activities. So that, that has been basically the case, how, how these uh, SMRs can, can get the first uh, deployment done. Those are, I think, the first main, main challenges. There are not that many technical challenges in this. If we, stay, if we stay in light water reactors. They are quite well proven designs. Uh, of course, there are different uh, features from different designs uh, used in new ways, but uh, the features as such, or the parts of the, re the reactors, they are, they are well tested and, and used. So uh, not so many technical uh, questions, of, of course some. Uh, this is only an example what we did I think it was last year, in Small Modular Reactors Task Force in World Nuclear Association. So they, they, that's available online. That's a report about uh, licensing, SMR licensing, basically. You can get the link uh, afterwards. Uh, then the last part. Why do SMRs play the role in the future? I don't think the SMRs will be the only nuclear that will play the role. I think there are a role for different types of nuclear reactors, but also SMRs. This is one example that I have been using a lot in past years. Um, this is AP1000. Of course, I could use EPR. We have one in, in Finland, you know, and the construction has been quite a long time. <laughs> I was actually leading that uh, EPR licensing in TVO for five years. Uh, I, I think I didn't do so good <laughs> because it's, it's still in construction, but well, it will be done. The idea here is not to show you exact numbers. The idea here is to show you how long time it takes to start this nuclear project or, or nuclear licensing and to get it finished because the end product is always the, the electricity or the power or whatever you get out of the, the plant. And if you check the AP1000 2002, they started the design certification. And that usually takes like four years in USA to, to get that. And then the combined construction operating license, again, about four years. And then the construction started. So it's just a it's just really, really long time period in, in current world to get something done. And this is one thing why I think that if we get the licensing right, and if we get the business model right, uh, SMRs can really play the role because they can be much faster uh, constructed and be ready uh, for actual operation. Uh, of course, the, the, I, I say here, it's not the case in Asia or Middle East. 
they haven't had these long projects, at least in, in the last years. They have been much, much faster, but at least in, in Western world, we have this uh, very long time periods. And this is alternative trends that we see, or maybe it's some of the combination. We see the large reactors and we see, see the small reactors. And there might be even both that for large reactors, certain, uh, certain needs, they, they are still the best way to go. And for small reactors in, in some others. It, it, of course, depends. Here is when we get to the actual future energy system. This is a fortune view. How do we see the, the energy system moving forward? There will be much more renewables. There will also be much more active uh, users or, or smart users, demand response, different ways of using energy. And what is the, the nuclear role here is this, basically what we study here is this box. And how does it combine with all these, these new things that we see moving forward? Even in Finland, and you, you know that Finland is not a very sunny place. And still, we do have a much more solar, and it's growing. So we have to understand where we need nuclear, what is the role, can we also help balancing the grid, or can we do something else with it? And digitalization also here needed to, to really see the big picture and, and combine these different energy production methods. Basically, this is my last slide. This is only to give you idea that we are moving forward fast. Of course, all nuclear is moving forward fast in, in many different ways. And digitalization in this industry is also a big thing. We use 3D models. We use a lot of uh, 330 videos, immersive trading. We use virtual reality in process simulations. Different things that, that can help us to do things better and faster. And I think you will see many of these if we go to WNE yeah, during this week. You probably, or maybe all of you will go there as well. I, I try to be there tomorrow. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>